Well, hello, guys. How are you doing? My name is Justin Griffith. I am uh, one of the directors for the Strong Men's Conference. I'm also a volunteer for the Arrows class. And, and I, I tell everybody, if you ever want to know the truth, you better ask a first grader. They will tell you the truth. Uh, also, I want to acknowledge, um, you know, our live streamers. They are here. We got people in Georgia, South Carolina, Texas, Maryland, New Jersey, China, and Dominican Republic. We got all those people viewing us right now. And uh, we thank you for showing, thank you for streaming live. Also, I want to acknowledge the, the pastors of this, of our church, uh, Troy and Penny Maxwell. They are doing a phenomenal job here in the city with this church at South End. Also, we got another one coming at Lake Norman. I mean, the church is on fire right now. There's a, there's a really, really nice buzz going on about Freedom House Church. Uh, I want to acknowledge my wife, Kim. I know she, I left her with three boys somewhere. And um, I really love her. God bless me with the, the greatest wife that you can ever have. Anytime God shows you someone and he says, go get them, your job is to go get them. <laughs> yeah, you go do it. Also, I'm pretty sure if I had my three boys up here, they would tell you, hey, man, we have the best mom in the world. But we're starting a new series called Restoration Hardware. And I want to lay the foundation for it. And the word restoration or the word restore means the action of returning something or someone to its original condition. Hardware or the tools, the machinery, or other doable equipment that you will use to build something or destruct something. The word restore is found numerous times in the Bible. The word restore is found 40 times in the Bible. The word restored is found 27 times in the Bible. The word restore is found two times in the Bible. And the word restoreth is found another two times in the Bible. God deals with every area in your life with those four words. You should praise God because either he has restored you or you are in the process of being restored or that you will be restored. God can restore anything. God can restore your marriage. God can restore your family. God can restore your kids. God can restore your relationships. And yes, God can restore your health too. Today, I want to share with you a few pointers that you can use, a few tools that you can use, and you can apply those tools in every area of your life, in your marriages, in your relationships with whoever you have a relationship with, and in your kids and, in, and, and, and with your friendships. I had an opportunity to interview a member of this church. Her name is Mia Wallace. She attends this church. I asked her a few, a few questions about restoring things because this is something that she likes to do. And I'm going to tell you how the interview went. My first question to Mia was, how do you choose to restore items? She said, I find inspiration through pictures, magazines, books, life experiences, then I see the piece that reminds me of it, and I choose it. My next question to Mia was, once you have the piece that you want to restore, what's next? She said, I write everything down. I need to restore it. Now, hold on. This thing is about to get good now. It's about to get good. Hold on. Then I asked her, I said, Mia, what are some of the tools that you would use to restore things. She said, I use a hammer, nails, and screws. I said, what are they for? They fix the broken pieces. Yeah, you better, I know it. Here it comes. <laughs> then what's next? She said, sandpaper or sander. It gets rid of all the rough edges. Then she said, I use paint. The paint covers all the spots and blemishes. And then she said, I use sealant. It protects it from rain, snow, bumps, or scratches. 
Now, about this time, I got so happy in the car because Mia is actually preaching my sermon. She's actually preaching my sermon. So I want to, I'm, this is Mia. I want to show you a picture of Mia. That's Mia. She's my sister-in-law. And I want to tell her, I thank her for doing the interview. And she didn't know I was going to do this, but I'm going to give you guys a one-time offer. If you have anything that you would like to restore, take it to our house. And she'll restore it for free. She didn't know I was going to do that, but if you're the first one, you come back and tell me how that worked out for you. <laughs> I know I did an interview with Mia, but if Mia can restore this old desk, this brown wooden desk, all right, wait on it, yeah, this brown wooden desk to look like this desk, then surely God can restore you. God can restore your marriages. God can restore your family. God can restore your friendships, and God can restore your life. Listen to this. God sent his son Jesus down to fix the broken pieces. He got rid of all the rough edges with his love. He covered us with his paint that we call blood, and he sealed us with, with his sealant, that we call the Holy Spirit. I'm going to say it one more time. Don't miss that one now. God sent his son down, Jesus, to fix the broken pieces. He got rid of all the rough edges with his love. He covered us with his paint that we call blood, and he sealed us with his sealant that we call the Holy Spirit. I was thankful for that interview with Mia. But if I had to go back, and grab a few characters in the Bible and interview those guys, I believe the interview would go something like this. The first person I would interview would be a man by the name of, a, the man by the name of Hezekiah. Hezekiah was a king in the Bible. But at this point in Hezekiah's life, he was on his deathbed. And the prophet Isaiah came to Hezekiah and he said, Hezekiah, you are going to die. What kind of information is that now? I'm on my deathbed, and you're going to tell me I am going to die. Yeah, I, I know. I know I'm going to die. He told Hezekiah that. Hezekiah, on hearing that information, the Bible said he turned his back, and he faced the wall, and he prayed, and he cried unto God. And the Bible tells us that God heard his prayers, and God granted Hezekiah 15 more years upon the land. Hezekiah would tell you that my prayers brought about restoration. If we went and we asked Job, Job was a faithful man. Job would tell you, I didn't do one thing. But one day I woke up, everything that I had, my cattle, it was gone. My children were killed. And my wife, all of a sudden, at some point, she told me to curse God and die. But I remained faithful. And through my faithfulness, God restored me. He gave me double what I had lost. Job would tell you that his faithfulness brought about restoration. And one man you have to talk about when it, come, when it comes to restoring is King David. David was a man, in, a, a king of Israel. And David, at one point, he got beside himself. David ended up staying home one day. He saw a woman. He slept with this woman. After he found out that she was pregnant, he had her husband killed. Not only that, David lost control of the whole city. But this one thing David had, David was a worshiper. And the Bible said it called David, David is a man after God's own heart. If David was on this stage right now, he would tell you that my worship brought about restoration. I don't know who you are, but your prayers can restore you. Your faithfulness can restore you. Your, your worship can restore you. Don't stop praying. Don't stop worshiping and always be faithful. Those things cause the hand of God to move in your life. 
You should shout amen on that one right now. But you know what, God, there's one story in the Bible that intrigues me. God uses a different tool, a totally different tool than what I'm used to seeing. You guys go with me to John chapter 8, verses 1 through 11. Jesus went across to Mount Olives, but he was soon back in the temple again. Swarms of people came to him. He sat down and taught them. The religion scholars and Pharisees led in a woman who had been caught in the act of adultery. They stood her in plain sight of everyone and said, teacher, this, mom, this woman was caught red-handed in the act of adultery. Moses, in the law, gives us order to stone such a person. What do you say? They were trying to trap him into saying something incriminating so they could bring charges against him. Jesus bent down, wrote with his finger in the dirt. They kept at him, badgering him. He straightened up, oh, that's my favorite part, and said, the sinless one among you, go first, throw the stone. Bending down again, he wrote some more in the dirt. Hearing that, they walked away one after another, beginning with the oldest. The woman was left alone. Jesus stood up and spoke to her. Woman, where are they? Does not no one condemn you? No one, master. Neither do I, said Jesus. Go your way. From now on, don't sin. I waited this long to give you my subject. And God helped me to preach this thing right here. Help me to preach it. I waited this long to give you my subject. My subject is when God gives you the finger. <laughs> See, you guys, y'all, you better check your minds and stuff. This is a totally different message. When God gives you the finger. I would like to give you three things that you are going to experience when God is restoring you. Three things that you are going to experience when God is restoring you. The first thing you are going to experience is that God will expose you. God will expose you. The story talks about these religion scholars and the Pharisees brought in a woman. And the Bible said they stood her in plain sight in front of Jesus. This woman had been caught in the very act of committing adultery, the act of it. And they stood her in front of Jesus. Can't you imagine how embarrassed she was? How she was shaken? How she was crying? How she was just laid open like a science project for everybody to view? What do you do when your private problem becomes public information? What do you do when something that you wanted to keep a secret now everyone knows. Don't worry. God is going to restore you. God is going to restore you. God exposes you so he can set you free. He exposes you so he can set you free. Upon, this, upon asking this question, Jesus, Jesus is sitting, he's teaching, and this woman is sitting there in front of him. And the Pharisees and the chief priests and the, and the scholars, they asked the question. They said, Jesus, Moses said, we should stone such a person. What do you say? And up on this, he does something that throws everybody off. He did not answer. The Bible tells us that he started writing in the dirt. He just started writing. He didn't answer the question. He started writing. And they kept on asking him and asking him. And he kept on writing. Then all of a sudden, all of a sudden, the Bible says Jesus straightened up. See, you have to understand something. God loves when you get into position. He loves positions. He loves positions. There's a story in the Bible that talks about Moses. 
And when Moses was, when the children of Israel, when they were at war, the Bible tells us Moses, as long as he had his hands in the air, they were winning the war. But when his hands, when they lowered, they would begin to lose the war. Also, in the book of Ephesians, it talks about putting on the whole armor of God. And when I've done all the do to stand, I need to stand some more. See, when God is exposing you, it's not for you to start fighting your battles. God wants you to stand. He loves when you get in position. That's why worshiping is a position that you should always get into. He loves, he loves when you do that. Now, the, the question comes up again. They keep asking Jesus this question. He's writing. He's writing. They keep asking questions. And all of a sudden, the Bible said, Jesus, straighten up. Now he's done gotten mad now. He straightened up. My second point to you is that God will fight for you. One, he will expose you. The next thing, he will fight for you. Jesus started fighting for this woman. He started fighting for this woman. See, there are two faces that he will wear when it comes to you. Jesus, he, he can't get away, get away from these faces. The first face that he wears, the Bible said he is the Lamb of God. The Lamb of God is full of grace and is full of mercy. Then the Bible also talks about that he is the lion of the tribe of Judah. The lion is a fighter. A lion is a devourer. So Jesus started fighting for this woman. So you don't have to start fighting your battles. The best thing for you to do is to stand and watch the lion of the tribe of Judah fight your battles. He's not going to leave you in that situation. He's not going to leave you exposed. God will fight for you. And the Bible tells us, the Bible talks about that they get to asking these questions. He straightened up. He straightened up and he asked them a question. He said, the sinless one among you, be the first one to cast the stone. And then he did it again. He bent down and he started writing. He wrote again. A second time he wrote. He said, the sinless one among you, throw the first stone. Throw the stone. If you're, bad, if you're big and bad, throw the stone. The sinless one among you. So this woman is still standing here. Jesus is fighting. And all of a sudden, the Bible said that they got their stones and they started dropping it, starting with the oldest one. That's a good point right there. They started with the oldest one all the way down. Started with the oldest one all the way up. See, there are two things that takes place when God restores you. He's restoring you on one side of it, and then on the other side, he's taking care of generation of curses. So you don't have to, so you don't have to ever face that thing again. He's going to restore you, and what they taught those, whatever they taught you years ago, God said, you know what, I'm going to deal with that too. So God is in the business of restoring things, and God is in the business of getting rid of generation of curses. Can I hear an amen? Yeah, God will fight your battles for you. God will lead you. God will restore you. And the third thing I want to tell you that you are going to, to experience when you are being restored God will touch you. God will give you the finger. The Bible said he knelt down and he wrote one time. He wrote one time. He knelt down and he wrote one time. Then it talks about he wrote a second time. I heard a, I heard a sermon one time. And it's about this, this preacher in Mississippi. I heard this sermon. My dad would take us to listen to different guys. And this preacher began to, he began to preach about what Jesus wrote in the sand. He said, man, yeah, Jesus was writing something in the sand. This preacher said, I know what he wrote. And I'm going to give you a little taste of what this preacher was talking about. So I need you guys to get into it just like I'm going to get into it. So this man was like, and the Lord said, <laughs> the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want he making me lie down in green pastures. He leading me beside the still waters. And at some point, one man would say, preach, preacher. That man said, I am. <laughs> he restored my soul. And then he was like, let me hear you say, yeah, like that. My goodness, boy. How did I do? <laughs> I... I don't know what Jesus wrote in that sand. I don't know what he wrote. 
I just know he wrote. He touched the ground. I don't know what he wrote. The Bible does not say anything about what Jesus wrote. But I believe I understand why he wrote. I have an understanding of that. Thank you, Lord, for being able to touch the dirty places in my life. Woo! Yes, sir. When no one else would touch me, he would touch me. When no one else would love me, he would love me. When no one else would walk with me, he would walk with me. When no one else would heal me, God would heal me. Not only did he touch me one time, but sometimes God would touch you a second time. God can touch that marriage. God can touch your friendships. God can touch your family. Yes, God can touch your child. Also, God can touch that child. He can touch our country. He can touch our church. He can touch our relationships. God is not, he would not run away from dirty things. He will not run away from dirty things. Yeah, he, 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 he's a master at working out stuff. See, this story talks about when man brought stuff to the woman, man brought the law and the stones. Jesus came in and he brought love, grace, and mercy. That's how God is going to restore you. God is going to restore you with his love, his grace, and his mercy. Not the stones, not the law, but his love and his grace and his mercy. Peter would tell you, I denied him three times. Three times. And he still loved me. The prodigal son would tell you, man, I went to my father. I got everything from him. I went to a distant country and spent everything that I had. My father saw me from a distance and he ran to me and he fell on me and he gave me my robe back, he gave me my shoes back, and he gave me my ring back. God will restore you because God loves you.